Good evening and welcome to this edition of Resource PNG. Glad to have you with us. For this evening, we have a presentation featuring Oil Search's annual general meeting for 2012. Oil Search reported a very successful year last year, 2011, and this year, with the company's involvement with the LNG, there is a lot to do. First up, we have Oil Search's chairman, Mr. Brian Horwood, with his address of the gathering at the annual general meeting. Now, before the formal business of the meeting, I would like to say a few words about the company's performance and achievements in 2011. This will be followed by a more detailed presentation by our managing director, Mr. Peter Botton, who will update you on the company's activities and progress in executing our strategic growth initiatives. So looking at 2011, all search enjoyed a very good year the company recorded a net profit after tax of 202.5 million US dollars, which was 9% higher than in 2010. The significant items comprising impairment charges and one-off tax items are excluded. Net profit was 235.7 million US dollars, an in increase of 64% on 2010. This result was helped by strong oil prices and a lower exploration expense, which more than offset the adverse impacts on costs of the strong Australian dollar and PNG Kina during the year. The company continued to achieve solid cash operating margins and total operating cash flow from our producing oil and gas fields was 386.2 million US dollars, 11 per cent higher than in 2010. This cash flow, together with drawdowns from our cash balance and the PNG LNG project finance debt, was used to fund our equity share of the PNG LNG project costs, as well as an active exploration development and appraisal program. At the end of 2011, the company had cash in the bank of over a billion US dollars and its corporate debt facility of 246.5 million US dollars remained undrawn. So this is a very strong cash position. We are in the midst of a very heavy, uh, very heavy sorry, a period of very heavy investment and have a range of gro exciting growth opportunities ahead. Although all search remains adequately funded to cover current commitments and is benefiting, benefiting from solid production and strong oil prices, we continue to manage our balance sheet cautiously given current global economic conditions. I think certainly events in Europe in the last couple of days just do show there's still strains in the global financial system. The board declared dividend payments of four US cents per share for the year, equivalent to 8.6 toya per share, which is consistent with 2010. The dividend was again fully under underwritten, so it was again funded by a fully underwritten dividend investment plan, which was well supported by shareholders. All such a safety performance in 2011 remained in the top quartile for energy companies around the world, with a total recordable incident frequency rate of 1.85 million hour per, per million hours worked. However, maintaining positive safety outcomes is a constant challenge. The management team remains very focused on continuing training and reinforcing the importance of adhering to world-class safety processes and procedures at all times. And I must compliment the uh, Managing Director, Peter Botton, and their management team for their achievement in safety. We have strived to really achieve world-class performance and, more importantly, make sure all our employees remain uninjured. But it's a task you can never relax about. And Peter, I know it's going up this afternoon to the Highlands 
for another safety uh, forum with our employees to continue the focus on safety. That was part of the Oil Search Chairman's presentation, Mr. Brian Horwood. More when we return. Welcome back. You're watching Resource PNG. Let us return to Oil Search's annual general meeting. Here is the company chairman, Mr. Brian Horwood, with the second part of his address. Major construction progress was made on all facets of the PNG LNG project during 2011, with the operator, SR Highlands, doing an excellent job of project execution. At the plant site near Port Moresby, the landscape has been completely transformed. I don't know any of you who've been out there, but still erection for both LNG trains is well advanced and the outer shells of the LNG tanks and substructure for the jetty are close to completion. The offshore pipeline is nearly complete, while the onshore pipeline <coughs> has made good progress inland from the coast and is now approaching Kutabu. Visible changes are also apparent in the highlands, both at the Como airfield, where earth moving productivity has increased markedly, and, and at the Hyde's gas conditioning plant. During 2011, all search successfully completed a range of LNG related modifications to its oil processing its oil field processing and liquids export facilities. With the last of the major production work, uh, the major work at the production facilities recently completed, we expect to have the capability to produce commissioning gas by the end of 2012. The project remains on track to commence first LNG sales in 2014 and apart from the impact of adverse exchange rate movements that were announced late last year, remains on budget. In addition to assisting SI Highlands with the successful delivery of the LNG project, all searches other strategic objectives are first, to mature and find new gas reserves in the Highlands and the Gulf and the PNG Gulf regions to be used for both LNG expansion and for us gas development opportunities. And secondly, to pursue in-field and near-field oil exploration and appraisal opportunities based on the view that substantial oil remains to be discovered in our existing producing areas, and that's up in the highlands. During 2011, Oil Search and its partners agreed a comprehensive program aimed at establishing additional gas resources in the Highlands region. This comprises exploration and appraisal drilling as well as further definition of the gas within existing oil and gas fields. And Peter Button will talk more about this, about this program in his presentation but I am very pleased to report that the campaign has started extremely, extremely well with a recent discovery of a substantial gas accumulation at Penyang South. Other aspects of our growth plan are also progressing well. We had considerable success in the near field exploration program at Kudabu in 2011. Two exploration wells discovered oil and both are now in production. In the Gulf of Papua, a, a range of exciting prospects has been identified from our 3D seismic with drilling activities targeted to commence at the end of 2012. All search places a high priority on operating in a sustainable manner and genuinely wants to make a difference with the communities in which it operates. <coughs> Supporting this, the company operates a wide range of social, community, de community development and medical programs. And the highlight for 2011 
was the formation of the Oil Search Health Foundation. <coughs> the formal launch of the foundation took place in March this year in, in the presence of the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Mr Peter O'Neill. The foundation, with support from a range of global partners, is expanding our world-recognised health programs within both our project areas and across Papua New Guinea. With the, an increasing amount of development activity taking place in Papua New Guinea, operating in a, in a sustainable way is becoming ever more important. You can read about our many programs in the 2011 Sustainability Report, which is available on our website. <coughs> there has been considerable political uncertainty in PNG over the last year, which has created some concerns within the banking and investment communities. Despite the political inst instability, neither the PNG LNG project nor our operations have been disrupted. But ensuring the continued security and safety of our staff and our, our contractors in the run-up to the election remains the highest priority for all search. We are encouraged that the government has confirmed that the election will proceed according to the original timetable. The country is already in a period of major social and economic change and this will increase further when the very significant revenues from the PNG LNG project start flowing in 2014. We look forward to working with the incoming government in particular on establishing structures and processes to manage these very substantial cash streams in the best interests of the nation and on ensuring consistency of fiscal terms which is critical for ongoing investment. During 2011, the board undertook a structure review of the board. And this review was focused on how the board should evolve over the next few years given the major changes that will occur when the PNG LNG project comes on stream with a substantial increase in cash flows for all search. The review concluded that we needed to establish a board which would take the company into its next long-term growth phase. And the board also confirmed their commitment to gender and ethnic diversity on the board. Following this review, two of the longest serving members of the board, Mr John Stitt and Mr Martin Krivolt, have decided not to stand for re-election and will resign at the conclusion of today's meeting. This will create the uh, capacity for, for two new directors to be appointed to the board and I would like to first thank John and Martin for their long and very substantial input to the company over the last decade and both Martin and John have been through phases which have been critical to the growth and have brought the company from being a, a very small player. We shall take a break and when we return we will have more from Oil Search's annual general meeting. Thank you for staying with us. The major focus for oil search this year is the PNG LNG project. Some major progress have been made in its civil and construction work, and all seems to be on track. Here is oil search's managing director, Peter Botton, with his presentation to the board and shareholders of oil search during the annual general meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you all for uh, coming along uh, uh, this morning to, uh, to our annual general meeting. It's a real pleasure to be up here and present to you once again on what is un undoubtedly one of the most exciting years ahead uh, in our company's long and, uh, and very interesting history. 
up on the slide in front of you is a, is a, a little uh, um, title which says Building Our Future. What we're doing in 2012 in terms of delivering LNG, in terms of building our reserves and commercialising our huge resource that we do have in Papua New Guinea is undoubtedly going to set our future uh, and a, I believe a very bright future ahead for, for the company, your company and, uh, and, uh, and all shareholders. Uh, what I'm going to do to you for you this morning is to, is to go through very quickly um, the 2011 financial results. I, I'm, Brian has already, our uh, chairman has already uh, given you some of the numbers and I won't linger very long on them. And they're also obviously very well described in our annual, annual report. I'll also give you some, an update in pictures primarily of what's happening on the PNG LNG project. Um, the various expansion opportunities that we've got before us, some really exciting programs going on. What we're doing in production and some near, near field activities and some other material exploration activities we're doing both in PNG and, and around the Middle East. I'll also inevitably touch on some of the local issues and how they're affecting our business and give you a little summary of what, uh, what, what we're looking for in 2012 and beyond. Just a, a quick overview of what, of what is going on. Clearly, um, the company has been a, a pretty good performer in, uh, in total shareholder return over the last six years. And that is a testament to the quality of, uh, of our assets here, primarily in P&G, but also to the operating environment, which we continue to manage, I think, reasonably well. And, and also the stability of policy within government, which allows us to invest with a clear mind and a clear heart that this is a pretty good place to be. That's delivered good shareholder performance, and I'll show you a graph of that in a moment. We do have very substantial growth opportunities that have been identified in our portfolio now, and we're really very optimistic that, uh, that they will deliver future value for, for all shareholders. We're undertaking the largest ever development appraisal and exploration program we've ever done, and this hopefully will deliver the growth. Obviously, a pillar to that is the PNG LNG Trains 1 and Trains 2 construction, which is now well and truly underway. As well as that, we're, we've got programs to build the resource base in the PNG Highlands. We've got a new area of exploration in the Gulf area of Papua, Papua New Guinea, which, has, uh, which will be seeing drilling, drilling program later this year and some material oil prospects both in the PNG and in the Middle East. Obviously, over the next 18 months with a very active drilling program, the results will be successively delivered and a, and a range of regular news updates on, on how the company's going. We've built, all this is built off a, a strong, steady production base, strong cash flows, and a healthy balance sheet which allows us to judiciously invest in these programs. If you look at the screen now, that, uh, on, uh, you can hopefully see uh, oil surge share price over the last five years versus the oil price, which is in blue, um, the Santos share price uh, and the Woodside share price, Santos in green, Woodside in, in orange. And in, uh, in P&G and in investing in P&G has shown material benefits uh, and we've outperformed a number of our major peer group, at least on the, AS, on the Australian Stock Exchange delivering a sh total shareholder return uh, uh, almost 300% over that period of time. That's a good, good result, but uh, hopefully there's more to come. Our chairman has already outlined a very significant priority in our organisation is the safety of our people. It's just not acceptable to come to work and go, go home injured for either of our staff, any of our staff or our contractors. So we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in driving uh, our safety performance and it's particularly challenging now with a lot of activity in the country a lot of people uh, brought into the oil and gas space in terms of construction uh, and many many calls on those people across the whole industry many people with little experience many cultures many different uh, types of people never been in the industry before so delivering a, a top quartile uh, result in terms of our safety record measured here by total in recordable injury frequency rate, um, we delivered in, in um, 2011 a TRIFR of 1.83, which is an, a, a very good performance. Not good enough because too many people still got hurt. But in the context of our peer group in Australia, 
you can see we had the second low lowest TRIFR of all the Australian listed companies, uh, which when you look at the environment in PNG, our various cultures, etc., also sitting right down at the bottom in terms of hurting people, is a, is a good achievement by our staff and our contractors. Still not good enough and a real challenge with all these new people coming on the industry and certainly uh, challenging uh, in 2012 as we carry out a lot of activity, but still a, a good result against our peer group. If I move now to the financial results and very quickly give you some, uh, some numbers and some pictures about those numbers, clearly our revenue stream, which was, was up substantially on 2010, was up around 26% driven by a much higher oil price the, uh, the oil price that, was, uh, uh, that we averaged in 2011 was $116 a barrel, up from around $80 a barrel the year before. And that combined with, with reasonably steady production, good tight ca cash uh, cost control, um, delivered us a, a, a net profit after tax uh, up about 9% at, um, uh, at around uh, $202 million US dollars. Significant tax bill and various items uh, obviously uh, impacted that result. If I look at some of the, uh, uh, of how that was put together, you see on the, uh, the very left-hand side uh, a net profit after tax in 2010, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the bar in blue, and this is the bar for profit in 2011. And what we see here is, is obviously revenue was up, uh, brought about by a strong oil price, Production was slightly down. Uh, some OPEX uh, was operating costs were up slightly. Um, we had less ex exploration expense in 2011, and we had a big tax bill ending up with a 2002 uh, result, two th 202 million result for 2011. Uh, if we look at our operating costs, I think everybody understands that inflation in Papua New Guinea is pretty strong. Um, most of the things that in life are going up here uh, brought about by the booming economy, and we're no different to that. We've seen strong inflation in, in, in costs. Certain aviation costs have gone up by over 30%, for instance, in, in for on year on year. Uh, overall, though, we had a pretty strong control of our costs, and we had an operating cost per barrel of about $20 uh, a, a, barrel, uh, a barrel of oil equivalent which is not a bad result, bearing in mind our oil price is sitting up there at about 116, making it a reasonable margin business. If we look at our liquidity, as our chairman said, we, we presently have uh, material uh, cash in, in the bank. We have a strong balance sheet augmented by good cash flows from operations. Our liquidity at the end of March was uh, somewhere around uh, 1.1 billion, which was made up of about 900 million in cash and 230 million in an undrawn corporate facility. We remain cautious though. Obviously the oil price is high at the moment, but we need to be careful and manage our, our, continue to manage our funds with substantial draws to P&G LNG uh, and our range of, uh, of our growth initiatives, which all cost substantial, substantial money. So we remain, we remain careful in how we manage these funds. That was Oil Search's Managing Director, Peter Botton. More on that presentation after this commercial break. The LNG project is on the lips of almost every Papua New Guinean, and Oil Search is a stakeholder in this project. In this segment, the company's managing director, Mr. Peter Botton, will give us a rundown on what is happening on site and what Oil Search is working on. If I move now to update you on the PNG LNG project, let me do that in a few pictures. What you see here is the, is the uh, primary um, outline of PNG LNG which takes uh, gas uh, and from uh, various fields in the highlands, from our oil fields at Kudabu uh, and Gobi, brings it down a pipeline, a gas pipeline down to the coast, in the offshore pipeline, down to the plant site in, uh, in Port Moresby. And let me walk you through what all of that looks like uh, progressively. What I'm going to show you now is a few pictures of the plant site down in uh, the Port Moresby area. And in this, here, this slide here, which was actually taken back in February, there have been substantial changes since then. You can see a very large flat piece of land. It actually has room for about eight trains of uh, LNG. We're presently cleared uh, three. 
This is the offshore um, uh, loading um, uh, jetty. Uh, the, the onshore pipeline, offshore pipeline comes in here. And in the flat lid on the back, there's a substantial construction, which I'll show you in a little bit more detail in a moment. If you look at what is going on out there, uh, the steel works for train one uh, are, are fully complete now. That, and all the, uh, in, all the major vessels are now being put inside that. Um, you can see from this slide a, a range of the uh, cooling vessels, the uh, separation vessels. And uh, again, another major works. Substantial activity going on uh, and going extremely well on the plant site area. Something over 5,000 people presently work on the plant site. Uh, over 70 different nationalities uh, out there working, obviously the bulk of which are, are PNG National Workforce members. These are the tanks. Uh, the outside of the tanks, the LNG tanks, are now finalised, and they're actually now put building the inside of the tanks with all the insulation to keep uh, the LNG nice and cool uh, before export. Again, I know a range of these major um, heat, heat exchanges which cool the gas and a range of separators, all going into the plant at a very rapid rate of knots. If I move to the red piece now, which is the offshore pipeline, the offshore pipeline is almost completed and uh, uh, it should be uh, demobilising sometime over the next uh, uh, six weeks or so. This is the offshore pipeline barge, uh, which uh, welds the, the pipeline together and then drops it off into the sea. And uh, that's uh, part of the pipeline being laid with a work vessel behind it. Again, gone very well. If I move to the onshore pipeline, the onshore pipeline is about two-thirds completed now. And you can see on the left-hand side uh, the various uh, clearing uh, off into uh, the various jungle. This is the, the onshore pipeline here. And the construction activities are now approaching Kudabu. And um, so the piece from the coast uh, up towards Kudabu has now been laid, cleared, uh, welded and put in the ground. And you can see various pipeline activities. The tougher part comes uh, in the next 12 months where the pipeline will come past Kudabu, go through the, the highlands and uh, arrive at Hydes. So significant work still to go on the pipeline. You can see various operations from the welding teams and the teams putting it in the ground moves extremely quickly when it does go and uh, is going pretty well. If I move then to uh, the Kudabu oil fields, we've had one of the challenges of actually building our, uh, a plant uh, and modifying our oil plant while we still produce oil. It's one thing to build a plant when it's got no hydrocarbons around, but when you've actually got oil and gas in the system, it actually is quite dangerous. So when you're cutting and, and welding things, it's been a real challenge to our safety. Uh, people uh, and making sure uh, we do it uh, and modify the plant well. The first area that we've done is actually replace the, the mooring buoy for our tankers out in the Gulf of Papua down in this area here. And that was successfully commissioned about two months ago. And we've uh, recently, uh, we're carrying out refurbishment to the offshore platform, which will give it another 30 plus years of life. It, it was pretty rusty and pretty run down, but with LNG coming and us managing the liquids export, we need to do a lot of work on the terminal. And that's go taking place now. In Kudabu, we've uh, had to put in various extra treatment facilities to dry the gas and make sure it comes out in spec. We've also put in a brand new control room, which is a much, in a much safer location. A lot of activity going on I in our oil fields to deliver what we need for PNGLNG. The oil fields will be producing about 20% of the total gas used for PNGLNG. If I move up to, to the Hydes and Como area, this is the uh, Como airstrip, which is to be used for landing very large aircraft, bringing in equipment and vessels for the Hydes gas processing facility. It started off uh, quite badly, frankly, with, uh, with design challenges and challenges of, of managing um, the, uh, the, the volcanic soils and, and moving things around in the wet. However, uh, with a lot of uh, further work and, and activity, ESO and its contractors have done a great job in turning it round, and it's now on track for completion later this year, which is perfect timing for the arrival of these very large aircraft. And I'm sure it'll cause a bit of a stir when they arrive in, in PNG for the first time and uh, take off from Port Moresby. I'm sure there'll be a few sellers on the, on the uh, side of, the air, of uh, Port Moresby airstrip uh, selling a few drinks and whatever, looking at that very, very large aircraft, one of the largest in the world. 
if we move to Hyde's, um, the Hyde's plant uh, facilities are, are being, uh, at the moment, the concentration is on the civil works to make sure the preparation and cons the construction of the main vessels and the main processing facility is in place. And you can see also in the background the Hyde's Mountain with a road climbing for drilling access uh, up the Hyde's Mountain. Again, going reasonably well. Uh, a lot of noise comes out of this area about landowner issues and certainly there are uh, ongoing daily issues with them. However, it is being well managed and not impacting our project in any significant degree to date. Overall, the PNG LNG is going pretty well. This is the year of heavy lifting for the project. Uh, about 30% of the total budget will get spent this year. So this is the time when 15 odd thousand people will be working here and uh, by the end of the year, people will start being laid off as the construction activity, some of the civil works are completed. A very big year for performance though for P&G LNG and therefore uh, us as a company and a major shareholder in the project. At the moment we're on track uh, to deliver gas uh, sometime in 14. It's a pretty wide window and certainly by the end of the year we'll be able to narrow that window down a little bit. All the plan appears to be coming together with the, uh, a substantial amount of activity, as I say, taking place in 2012. Stay with us as we will be right back after these short messages. Thanks for staying with us. Exploration has not stopped for oil search. They have had much success in this field with Pinyang South and Trapia. They have other aims down the pipeline. Here is Oil Search's MD, Mr. Button, with the last part of his presentation at the recent annual general meeting. If I move on now to gas expansion, and clearly the, the future value of our organization, of our company, is very much dependent on finding more gas uh, and commercializing that gas, as well as, uh, as obviously oil. We have a very large program going on in the highlands uh, of P&G, which will hopefully um, provide confidence to commit to further expansions of P&G LNG, and may in the future lead to further uh, gas commercialization, even potentially outside that project. We have a four-prong uh, uh, program uh, going on in the highlands. The first one is Pinyang South, which is, a, as our chairman said, has been a very successful uh, drilling activity. We have a second exploration well at Trapia, which is just about to start. We have ongoing Hyde's development drilling and appraisal uh, over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And we've also got more gas that we're finding in our oil fields, all of which contribute to underwriting uh, Train 3 and further expansion of LNG. The first one is Pinyang South, which was a field to the northwest of uh, Hyde's. A very successful drilling campaign just re now completing on, on that location. The drilling uh, work together with the sidetrack uh, drilling uh, has identified a, a total gas column of around 650 metres, substantially greater than our initial views of going into the drilling program. And there's no doubt that the results have materially um, increased at the total re resource base at Pinyang and go a long way to underwriting the volume necessary for a T3 expansion activity for PNG LNG. A very good start to a very big program, first well being a success and a material success. The second prong is Trapia, which is a well very close to Hydes and Angori in our heartland gas area. Uh, it's quite close, as I say, to Hyde's. There are four different prospects in this area, and where the first one we'll drill is Trapia. Those four prospects all have about one, one and a half TCF of gas, and um, uh, the total area, but the potential in the area is, is uh, above five TCF. Again, a substantial potential volume available, with Trapia being an exploration well, higher risk, but, but also a uh, substantial potential resource in, in the area. Trapia is just about to start, about a three-month well to, to completion. The next slide shows you the Hyde's gas field, and the Hyde's gas field drilling, its appraisal and development drilling, is just about to start, should start towards the end of May, uh, beginning of June. And that's an 18-month program initially with one rig, with a second rig coming later this year. The drilling is, has two purposes. It's to drill the development holes which will produce the gas for P&G LNG 
but it's also will test the, how far down the gas goes at heights. Uh, we have not established where the bottom of the gas field is, and one of the wells will try and do that. We also don't know how far to the northwest the gas, well, the gas field goes. So there's substantial further upside reserves in hides, and that'll be properly tested by the drilling program over the next 18 months, a, a major upside uh, for the project. We also see that there's further resources in the ore fields. And we already believe, having had recent discoveries in the oil fields, that there's around a, uh, a half a TCF of extra gas that we can find in our oil fields. And that's very high value gas. It's already been developed and can be linked in directly very early into PNG LNG. So when you add uh, the Heights program, the Trapia program, the uh, uh, resources from the oil fields, we believe there's more than enough now, especially with the start uh, for PNG, for, from Pinyang South, to have great, very great confidence that a T3 and beyond can, um, can be made out of PNG LNG. And we anticipate that by the end of next year, we'll have the resource base in place. We'll, we'll hopefully be well and truly into feed and be looking at committing uh, to uh, a development of, of train three, hopefully sometime in, uh, in 13, uh, early 14. A very good start to the program to underscore future value growth in our organization. Let me move now to the Gulf of Papua, which is a new area. It's, it's got three gas fields already discovered out there, but it's new for us. And over the last uh, 18 months or so, we've put together a series of licenses in the Gulf, and we'll be drilling there later this year. We shot a very large state-of-the-art 3D seismic survey, which is uh, in the orange, uh, as you can see on the slide. And uh, we identified a whole range of new prospects uh, and, uh, and s some significant gas potential out in the Gulf. This is some of the seismic. I know that's uh, probably quite foreign to you, but this is just a slice of one of the lines through the area. And the lines do show the presence of gas. What we're really after in the Gulf is the presence of a trap uh, for, for hydrocarbons, but also r reservoir quality. And the seismic's given us some ideas about where that might be. Later this year, we'll be drilling those holes. We've uh, got a significant equity somewhere between 70 and 80% in these areas. And we'll be farming down these areas to a credible LNG operator, hopefully later this year. We've already received a number of bids for that. And uh, over the next couple of months, we'll hopefully finalize that transaction, farm down, and receive a reasonable carry through the exploration phase, with drilling starting in December. If I look, just very quickly touch on the oil fields, production from our oil fields remains our core cash flow. And our guys have done a fantastic job of keeping the production up. If you did nothing in these fields, they declined by 20% a year. That uh, would be a decline in revenues uh, accordingly. Obviously, subject to oil price, that could be quite large. So what they're doing is squeezing these oil fields pretty hard. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary of oil production from Kudabu. And we still manage to keep uh, our fields pretty well, uh, pretty going well, and delivering us good cash flow through to first LNG. A very big program there this year as well, with a series of, of extra wells, um, a series of workovers, and really working the fields hard to keep that production up. One last area of growth potential for the organisation is the Middle East, and uh, I'll, I'll just highlight two wells here. One of our, the core expertise in the company is actually managing fold belts, and the PNG Highlands is a classic world-scale fold belt which, uh, in which we found a lot of hydrocarbons. Other fold belts around the world uh, we, we look at occasionally, and our structured geologists came up with a, a, a structure in Kurdistan, in Iraq, and this structure is very large. It has the potential for over a billion barrels of oil, and... Uh, we have a 60% share in this, uh, in this uh, prospect. It's quite a tough place to do, to do business and commercialise, but it is a very large, simple structure with a lot of potential upside, and that'll be drilled starting in July. We also have a well in Tunisia, which also has materiality, about 100 million barrels, which will be drilled post, uh, post uh, uh, the Taza well in Kurdistan. So... We, although our focus is strongly on Papua New Guinea, we still have, using our various expertise, a number of other areas that, that are of interest to us. Let me finally now turn to the local issues. And obviously, 
working in Papua New Guinea is, is not necessarily the easiest place. Though without some 80 odd years of experience, this company does it, I think, reasonably well. There clearly are a range of challenges and uh, as our chairman has said, there's been uh, unprecedented political uncertainty over the last uh, uh, past 12 months or so. In reality, we've had no impact on to our operations and, and we continue to progress all our projects pretty much as is. May be difficult if you want to start something, but at the moment, the, the momentum for our oil business and PNGLNG is extremely strong. Obviously, we look uh, to the security and safety of all our staff through the uh, run-up to the election and through the election period, but again, we've managed that before. We're very much looking forward to the election, starting with a new government formed in August and September and working with the new government uh, into the future and building our value here. Um, we don't anticipate any off change to our operating status, but, but we certainly are cautious, cautious and watchful. We've mentioned already the biggest ever program we've ever carried out in PNG. It's uh, over $2 billion US dollars oil search we'll spend in this country this year. That's a very substantial commitment to the place and a significant vote of confidence in the quality of our assets and the ability of the company to work with government, the bureaucrats and our communities to manage the operating and investment risks here. Obviously, uh, future financial benefits and uh, coming into the country from PNG and LNG and our oil business need to be managed and managed well. We do believe as a company we have to put something back, more back into, into PNG. We will be working very closely with government to have better distribution of our benefits from our projects, um, work with them about uh, land code payments and transparency about where it goes. But as our chairman said, one of the initiatives we do think is necessary uh, is uh, a presence across the whole country. Landowners in our project area w will have the opportunity to be, become rich and have access to services, there's no doubt, uh, if the benefits are managed properly. Our concern is the rest of the country where um, the effects of inflation and, and the effects of the, the booming economy is having impact on, on people's lives. If you're away from the project area, it's tough. And one of the initiatives that we, we launched earlier this year is the Health Foundation, and I'll show you a video of that in a moment. But it is a real attempt by the company to build on its expertise in health and health service delivery uh, across the country. And this year, the Health Foundation will be working in nine provinces. Hopefully, we can expand that across the rest of the country over the next few years. As well as that, obviously, we do very active development programs in education, training, and agriculture. A significant reinvestment in this society, as we should as a major corporate entity in the country. A very strong social requirement for us to maintain uh, our business reputation and um, put something back. In summary then, 2012 is potentially transformational for oil search. An unprecedented opportunity to underscore our long-term value growth from our por portfolio of assets. The peak activity in PNG takes place this year. The largest ever drilling program ever undertaken by the company is now underway with a very early success, always good to have. And that'll continue through 2012 into 13. We have continued strong oil production f from our good old oil fields and um, an active pursuit of, that, of further ex extensions of those oil fields nearby through the drilling. And the activities are under, underwritten by a good cash flow, solid balance sheet. And we remain very confident that the risks of the business can be managed. And uh, building our future is part of what we're doing. And uh, this year we'll see uh, the fabric and the bricks put on the bottom of that with the delivery, further delivery of PNG and and further resources uh, out of the highlands and elsewhere in our portfolio to underscore further growth. That was Mr. Botton's speech at Oil Search's annual general meeting. We'll have more after this break. Oil Search has already got the next few years planned out in terms of exploration and expansion. They have also had improvement in their safety performance. 
Here is an interview I did earlier with the managing director, Mr. Peter Botton, who talked about the company's plans. Good evening, Mr. Botton. Good evening. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, just to start off, um, I believe Oil Search has a very, um, well, it's got a big lineup for the rest of the year. And right now, with the outlook in terms of business growth, that includes what's happening with the global financial crisis, as well as the strengthening of the PNG China. Um, what are what is Oil Search looking at in terms of growth in Papua New Guinea? Well, first off, uh, this is probably the biggest year of investment that Oil Search has had in its history in Papua New Guinea. We've been here since 1929, and we estimate this year all our programs in development, appraisal, and exploration will cost about 2.1 billion US dollars. So. We're putting a lot of money back into the country and um, for long-term growth, initially through the development of PNGLNG, but also our exploration appraisal programs to look at further expansion, look at more resource, more gas, more oil to be discovered, which we think is in the highlands and in the offshore. And of course, that's a big investment uh, in the country, which uh, would could give us uh, growth in terms of revenues and production maybe three, four, five years away. So it's a long-term growth strategy that we have and, uh, and believe in for P&G and our assets here against uh, an economy in the world which is pretty turbulent and obviously recent events uh, in elections in Greece uh, and in France have changed the political spectrum there and uh, that's been reflected in some instability in the stock markets. That's not affecting our commitment to what we're doing here, though. We have a strong balance sheet and a really very strong belief that there is a lot of potential remaining in our licenses in PNG. And if the fiscal regime and the government and operating conditions remain stable, we'll continue to invest very substantially in this country. All right. Thank you. And also, in terms of new growth opportunities, that was something that was mentioned during the, um, the general meeting today. Um, what exactly is Oil Search looking at in terms of new growth? Well, there are a number of facets to our growth strategy. Um, the first one is obviously finding more gas and oil in the highlands, uh, and uh, that's a major program of drilling which has started already with the uh, uh, discovery of gas at Pinyang South. The, that rig will now move on to a, a well called Trapia. We have drilling activities as part of PNG LNG uh, and operated by SO Highlands in, on the Hydes gas field. Uh, and we've also got further drilling in our oil fields for both gas and oil. So all of those programs have the potential to find more gas, more oil, and underwrite uh, other commercialization options, including expansion of PNG LNG. Uh, and by the end of this year, beginning of next year, through a very comprehensive program, we'll have a much better idea of what resources there are up in the highlands. Oil search stresses a lot on safety performance. Now, according to the figures that were given um, today, at, in 2001, 2011, you've got 1.85, and in 2010, that was, there was 1.96. Now, there was an increase in terms of safety performance. Can you please elaborate as to what, mm. how you calculate those figures and sure. what it really means to oil search? Okay, well, firstly, we have around uh, 1,000 people who work for oil search and about depending on the time of year, another 2,500 people working as contractors and, and landowner companies working in our operations. So somewhere between 3,500 and 4,000 people work in our operations around the world. Uh, and we take the safety of our people extremely seriously. It's not acceptable for us to have any one of our people, either our employees or our contractors, come to work and go home injured. It, it's not acceptable for us. We take that as being very serious. The numbers you mentioned are, are what's called uh, total uh, in injury frequency rates per million person work hours. Now that's a, a statistic which basically just measures how many people get hurt per million hours. And uh, that number that, that we had last year was the second best safety record of any Australian listed company. So we were right down at the bottom. Normally injuries across, uh, unfortunately, across the oil and gas industry in Australia probably run at about five uh, incidents per million uh, person hours. We're at just under two. So we're significantly better at keeping our people safe than others. We're not, we're not perfect because we still hurt people, unfortunately. But, but we spend a lot of time and a lot of focus 
on getting safety right in the organisation. And that's very challenging given the number of people involved, the number of people, the skilled people that have gone off to work in LNG construction and all the booming economy around. So, but it is a very, very big focus in our organisation and something we spend a lot of time and effort to try and keep our people safe. So Oil Search has several um, gas fields it's working on, um, and there's a new one, Pinyang South, if that's the way you pronounce it. Can you tell us some, some, a little bit more about Pinyang South? Yeah, Pinyang South was the first well that we've got to testing the Highlands resource potential. Um, it's the first well that we've, dr we've drilled this year. Uh, it uh, identified a gas column that could be more than 650 metres thick. It f it's a significant gas resource in, in the context of Papua New Guinea and a very encouraging start to our drilling program. Where and how we might use the Pinyang resource base is being analysed now, how much we've got is being analysed now, but it's a very encouraging start to, to look at uh, a resource that could underwrite further commercial options for uh, the development in PNG uh, and PNG Highlands specifically. All right, just one last question. Um, Oil Search has helped a lot with community development and I think you're focusing a lot on the health sector in terms of malaria and HIV prevention and um, programs within that area. What is Oil Search looking at? I believe you said that to go out to about nine different provinces besides where the area that you're working at? Yeah, PNG, uh, Oil Search is a big company in PNG. It's uh, not a big company in the world, but a big company in PNG. And we've made uh, a very healthy return to our shareholders out of reinvesting in PNG and grown the company a lot over the last uh, 15 or so years. We, with that PN development of PNG LNG, it's time we believe we put something back, not just into the communities where our projects are, but also across the rest of the country. And we've been running malaria control, HIV AIDS management programs, child maternal health programs, uh, and general health programs within the communities where we have projects. What we're doing now is expanding those, pro those um, health programs out across the rest of the country and being supported and working with the National Department of Health, uh, being supported by Global Fund um, and other aid agencies. So we provide the arms and legs and the expertise uh, and the organisation and our people go out partly funded by All Search but also partly funded by the donor uh, agencies to deliver some of these healthcare programs ac across now nine provinces and hopefully expanding across the rest of the country um, uh, over the next couple of years. It's a big commitment. We, uh, we've had very good outcomes in terms of child mortality rates which are significantly less in our project area where we've been active. We've eradicated malaria from parts of the Hydes Valley due to our programs a and we think we can extend those programs very successfully across the rest of the country over the next few years. Sounds like very good progress. Now, lastly, is there anything else you'd like to add? Ah, so I look a fantastic com company to, uh, to work for right now. Very exciting future for, for us in Oil Search, um, but also a very, very pivotal time in the country. Development of PNG ING and other potential resource projects represent the platform for uh, further growth in the economy. And what we're looking for, certainly post the election, is, is working very closely with the new government to ensure that the benefits that do flow from PNG LNG and our other oil, oil operations are well managed and well distributed across the country in an appropriately socially responsible way. Thank you, Mr. Barton, for your time. Pleasure. That ends another evening with Resource PNG. Thank you for being with us. And in next week's edition, we feature the Asian Development Bank's Country Diagnostic Studies on PNG's critical development constraints. So do join us then. And remember, if you have any queries, please email us on this email address, resourcepng at mtv.com.pg. Until then, have a great evening.